Okay, let me tell you what I got going here on my palette. Um, I'm using a Masters Stay Wet palette, which uh, I typically use for acrylic paint, but uh, also works really great for oils um, because I can put the rubber lid on and seal it completely. I also like to put in a little cotton ball, um, and on that cotton ball, I add a little bit of clove oil and the chemicals in the clove oil uh, dripped on the cotton ball um, and then sealed in will those chemicals will help these oils to not dry out so they can stay for weeks or months without drying and it's just a nice way of not spending too much money by having to constantly waste paint so the colors I'm using here are just five basic colors, so pretty simple palette. Um, I'm using raw umber, ultramarine blue, cadmium red, cadmium yellow, and titanium zinc white are my five colors. And with those colors, I've pre-mixed up my flesh tones um, using a little bit more of the umbers, uh, the blues and the reds on the darker skin tones and as I gradually move into the lighter skin tones uh, I use a little bit more red, yellow and white and a little bit less of the other two. So got my skin tones ready to go, pretty simple basic palette and um, this is what we're going to be using to work on our little ballerina. So the other thing I failed to mention about using the Stay Wet palette is I had a sheet of glass uh, cut and inserted into the bottom of this palette. Um, you can go to Michael's. I went to Michael's and um, in the picture frame department they can actually measure out and cut glass for you. So that's something that, uh, that you can do. Uh, it's a nice little trick there. Um, so just uh, using just a few brushes really um, I've got two of these uh, five zero brushes um, very tiny little brushes uh, little nice round pointy brushes and then I've got a one-eighth um, angle angle brush which is a really nice brush this will help me to get uh, some of the broader strokes in there. So these are the two, uh, the three brushes. Uh, the reason I'm using two of these brushes is I have one for my light colors and I've got one for my my dark colors. So essentially these these colors here will be used with that brush and I'll use my lighters with this brush and that way I don't um, contaminate the brushes um, and then I'll just be wiping off uh, with my paper towel. I really when I paint these paintings um, when, I'm, when I'm working sort of with portrait painting and, and oils um, I don't really like to clean my brush too much in the mineral spirits so I just like to wipe it off and keep going um, and then I may use a little bit of linseed oil uh, but other than that, that's really all we're going to be using to work on this painting. So right now I've uh, just getting started here. I'm going to be using acrylic uh, to begin with. And um, so I've just, uh, I'm taking here a, a large, I believe this is my number 12, flat bristle brush and um, putting very little paint on the brush. I'm really just skimming here. Um, so so um, kind of created a very soft, very um, soft beige color here. Um, and then going through here and just skimming and then just adding little bits of color as I go. 
I really want a lot of that background color to show through. Don't want to kill all that black. That's going to be very important to all the shadows. Our little ballerina girl is going to be sitting um, on a studio floor. So these are just all the, the wood grain that I'm trying to simulate here right now. And it's just going over it again and again, slowly adding more color, slowly building. Then I just uh, add a little bit more beige and um, bring in these gentle highlights. It's just a small kind of in increments, bringing in a little bit more color at a time. And this floor is really the only time I'm using acrylic. And then on top of that, we'll paint our little ballerina all in oil. I'm just trying to follow the angles here. This will be as if we're looking down at the floor right over the ballerina girl. So now that I've um, kind of completed all the, the skimming, um, I'm using my small um, script liner brush here and I'm just adding some individual wood grain. And just coming in here and kind of picking out individual lines in the floor. So our light source is really going to be coming from the right of the canvas. So it's important to kind of keep that in mind as I'm going through this painting. So now I'm just kind of using my charcoal pencil and drawing in all the different slats uh, in the flooring. And I want to make sure I'm just getting the good straight lines as a guide so that I know. Um, and then I come back here and I'm using my felt tip pen to just draw on those lines. I wanted to have nice, clean, sharp lines here. So uh, I, I tend to, to use my felt tip pen for these types of uh, effects. And then I'm just drawing some more individual lines as well. Um, some of the breaks in the floor and the jointing um, of the slats. And then just kind of coming back here and just kind of drawing in by hand some some darker lines. Um, some of those rings that that we would be expecting to see in wood grain. And then coming back with my script liner brush here and I'm going back into uh, a lighter value of my of my tan color and, and adding those lines. Now I've decided to go ahead and uh, put the, uh, the canvas on my lap. Um, I always feel like when I'm working on on portrait style paintings, uh, I like to get it uh, right there in front of me. Um, this is where you get your nose right into the canvas. So I've sketched out our little ballerina girl with my charcoal pencil. And um, now I've changed palettes. I've gone from my acrylic palette to my oil palette. And uh, now I'm just going through my, my different flesh tones that I've premixed. And uh, I like to start usually in the middle of, the, of a face when I start working on 
on uh, any any portrait paintings. Um, usually start around the eyebrows uh, is my darkest color, and uh, and then move into the eyes, and then from that point on, uh, I can go in and around the um, the the face and uh, the bone structure and the cheeks. So I like to paint this all wet on wet when uh, I'm using oils. I like to use the blending time and uh, I do pre-mixing both on my palette but also right on the canvas itself. And then it's just a matter of going from, from lights to darks. And again, I do not um, ever clean my brushes when I'm working on, on the skin of, uh, or the flesh of, of the subject. Um, I just keep wiping it off and returning to the paint. And then from here, just kind of start to slowly build in all these features. So our little girl, she's going to be in quite a bit of shadow. Um, most of the primary um, face and shoulders and neck are, are really going to be all in shadow. So I'm really using my a lot of my my darker um, mixed premixed colors. Uh, so really, we're working a lot with um, the the burnt umber and uh, blue and red with a little uh, white mixed into that to help opaque that. And then, of course, as I move into my lighter colors, uh, getting more into the uh, reds, yellows, and whites. And I just uh, increase and decrease uh, the value of those colors uh, using uh, the, the white. And as I go into the larger skin areas, uh, surface areas, I use my, my larger uh, angular brush. And then the finer details, I'm using my my double zero uh, small round brushes and get a really nice fine point to them and can really work the finer details. So just blocking this all in now and we'll get all that kind of staged and come back here and then start adding in some of the highlights. Um, wiping my brush off and going into the into the lighter colors, but it's really uh, just a matter of using those five colors: burnt sienna and ultramarine blue, um, and then using um, cadmium red, cadmium yellow, and uh, our titanium white zinc. Uh, those five colors I can manipulate pretty well to make any skin tone and uh, and of course using the color wheel if I feel like I'm um, maybe just a little bit too using too much blue then I'll, I'll go in and I'll kind of um, try to, to tone that down a little bit more with, uh, with uh, a little more of my oranges and reds. All right, so kind of moving into the uh, to the ear now, um, and I'll go back through back to the face again and add some some more highlighting, uh, kind of as we go and, and doing a little bit of tweaking. But right now, this is just the primary uh, blocking in of of our little girl here.
I'm going to tend to move this canvas around quite a bit, and I apologize for that. I'm going to have it throughout the painting. Uh, I'll be working right off the easel at some points and then right off in my lap. Now, as I'm working on the primary features um, with all the, the skin tones, um, I'm typically keeping that right next to me in my lap. And, um, and then as I start moving into her little roughly dress then um, and, and hair, I, I can really start to work off the, off the uh, easel. So now just blocking in her her hair now and really just um, using a mixture of burnt umber and ultramarine blue and then using a little white to kind of lighten that up slightly. Now as I start working into the texture of the hair, I'm actually picking up some of my flush tones. I'm actually using some of my, my lighter flush tones to create the highlights in the hair. I really wanted it to complement the skin tones. So just coming back with my, with, uh, my small uh, zero brush and um, and kind of creating all the all the different strands of hair here and then going back and of course blocking in the the primary um, silhouette of the hair with our dark blue umber color just want to get that all kind of worked in here real quickly and then i can um, later on add the uh, the bow in the hair. So really, um, I'm just bringing in these individual strands. Um, it's of course still wet and using those flesh tones and uh, it's kind of picking up some of that, that darker color underneath. ahead and blocked in with uh, a gray color the, the bow and the uh, the band that's in her hair um, and all I used on that was white and uh, burnt umber mixed together to create that dark uh, grayish under painting and then later on I'll go back and actually uh, work on that bow but I'll let it fully dry first Now as the hair come, the hairline kind of meets the skin, I like to soften that up. Um, I usually make an effort of having a nice, smooth, blended transition. I, I don't really want to have real hard lines uh, when I do that. All right, so uh, now we're going to kind of move into working the, the dress right now. And I wanted to get this dress worked in first because um, her back and her neck and shoulders um, I wanted to paint those in afterward I figured I would be uh, having less of a headache trying to uh, work around um, her back if I first just introduced getting the furthest uh, parts of her dress worked in so I'm just going bouncing back and forth. And again, I, I'm using different values of my white and, uh, and my burnt umber. Um, so really a lot of the dark shadow is, is the light burnt umber um, color, that gray color I'm bringing in and then on top of that, I'll, 
will start to introduce uh, lighter shades of, of the highlighted white. So now I'm just trying to bring in the, the gray first and then um, and then I'll bring in the highlighted white portions of these ruffles as I go. So not using a too, too complex of a palette, uh, really um, mainly just utilize the five colors we discussed and, and bounce back and forth uh, between them. Now this is a little white dress. Um, so we'll be using quite a bit of white throughout this. And right now I'm using it in its pure form because this is the this is the most bold um, sunlit sections of the dress. Now as I slowly work toward the left side of the painting, um, I'll tend to use less of that pure white and, and use more of our of our um, white and burnt umber. And that'll help to create the shadows. I've kind of moved into using my larger angle brush quite a bit um, as I as I move into the larger regions of the ruffles. And um, right now I'm really kind of separating out my darks and my lights, really kind of um, bringing in the, each individual section of each ruffle. But as I move into um, the larger surface area of the stress, I'm going to really uh, use my large angular brush and I'm going to just uh, underpaint in underpainting quite a lot of the, um, the dress with my my dark umber first. Now I decided to stop the dress work here and start working on um, our little girl's shoulders and back. Um, now that I got the back portion of that dress worked in, then I, I, uh, I now can, can bring in these, these flesh tones once again and, and not worry about having to be too careful if uh, the dress might, might bleed into uh, the lines on the back. So that was kind of my rationale in doing that. I try to make it a point of not having to to uh, outline around objects too much if I can help it. Um, so, so again, coming back to my my palette here and working on these flat, same flesh tones, uh, starting with the the darks and then transitioning into the lights and then getting those blended in. And I try not to over blend when I work on portrait paintings. Um, I like doing subtle soft blends, but I also like brush strokes. And I feel like uh, brush strokes really help to, uh, you know, make it really, I, I personally feel like it makes it look a little more realistic, um, but also give it that painting quality to it. So I find that if I try to over blend things, it can kind of start to look a little bit too just uh, too forced and, and a little too fake. And I don't want I don't want any of my paintings to look like I'm painting uh, a doll. I'm trying to make it look as as lifelike as as I can. So 
So as I work on these larger sections of the skin, uh, I tend to like to um, block in the darks, block in the lights, and then as I come, as I bring them together, uh, really start to blend directly on the canvas to bring in those transitions. Okay, so coming back with a little bit of the highlight color. Um, again, I think it's, it's noteworthy to mention that uh, I'm not really using any mediums. I'm not using uh, liquids, uh, I'm not using linseed oils. Um, I'm really just using the, the direct pure colors right from the tube. Um, if I feel like I need to have a section dry rather quickly, uh, I like to use liquid sometimes, but uh, for the most part, when it comes to um, working on my portraits, I like to just use the, the pure color from the tube right from its form, and uh, I get better blending. Um, I'm not speeding up any dry processes. So now I do tend at the very end, as you'll see later on in the painting, I will come back and create some glazes with a uh, liquid um, and um, come back and kind of kind of spot check more or less certain sections of the painting that I want to augment. Uh, I want to blend or smooth out uh, or in introduce uh, other other values. So I'll cover that here a little bit later. All right, so I'm coming back to the dress again, and uh, I'm using a I'm using a filbert brush here. I've got a large filbert brush. I I want to say it's it's like a number a number eight filbert, um, and so kind of increasing my brush sizes uh, I'm working on the, the larger ruffles here. It's kind of bouncing back and forth. So now I'm really kind of covering most of the canvas now with um, using that filbert brush and just going right into my my um, burnt umber and white mixture. It creates that that nice umber gray color. And I'm gonna really cover a lot of a lot of this dress with that color first. And then on right on top of that, I'm going back in and bringing in pure white. And because it's still wet, um, it won't be too bold, it'll blend in nicely. And I wanted to get that kind of that blended lighter value of white. But just a little trick I like to do because um, it, it will pick up that, that dark umber color underneath and then using the pure white in its form will just mix directly onto the canvas and soften up those ruffles. And of course this side of the dress is going to be in more in shadow so uh, we won't need to use um, as light of color we're not going to have as much uh, of the light hitting that region of the dress And I can work, get that strap worked in, work in the rest of the dress uh, across her, her chest. This will be a lot in shadow as well. So 
So I wanted to get the rest of this dress blocked in before I started working on the arms and the leg. Um, that way um, I'm not having to work around uh, those objects quite as much. So I just feel like it's much easier that way, get all that worked in, and then I can block in the arms and the legs. So I like working in the oils this way. Um, I can get a lot of the blending done wet on wet. And, um, and then later on when it dries, I can bring in some more sharp uh, values and contrasts. But working wet on wet um, with these types of objects, with, with um, people and their flesh tones and with the clothing um, because of all the, uh, the ruffles, um, I, I typically find it's, it's just, it's just really nice to be able to, uh, use the, uh, additional, uh, blending time and getting those, those nice, soft, subtle transitions first. And I'm working on her little earring here, uh, real quickly, get that worked out. By this time, um, several days have passed and and her her face and her ear and her neck have, have started to dry pretty well. So I'm uh, coming back here. This bow is completely dry by now. Several days have passed since I put it in. Uh, possibly, probably even a week has gone by by this point in time. And um, I can just draw, paint these right on top and, and uh, get that worked in real quickly without it trying to blend too much. All right, so coming back with some more pure white color and getting some more highlights here blocked in here in the back of her dress. So a lot of this, um, it's not fully dry, but it's dried significantly enough that uh, I can come back with my filbert brush and add some subtle highlights. But I won't need to add too much on this particular side of the dress, being more in shadow. But I can use sort of a dry brush blending technique here and bring in some subtle changes and some subtle highlights. That's kind of the process I like to use. Uh, start off uh, wet on wet, getting as much uh, canvas blending as I can, bring in soft transitions, and then take a couple days, let it begin to dry, and then come back and add some more, more dry brush techniques on top of that. And, um, and then when it fully dries, then I can come back in and uh, and really add some of my final highlights that I want to do, which is typically just uh, dry brush skimming, uh, more more pure colors uh, on top of of the dried um, blended colors. So it's just a, a process. Um, 
I find that when I work in oils, um, I have to have a different mindset from when I work in acrylics. Um, you can do a lot of the same techniques between the two. There's some crossover, but a lot of times I've got to be mindful that I can't necessarily treat them the same way. And um, depending on what I'm trying to accomplish, um, I, I tend to, with acrylics, I tend to definitely do more blocking in and more um, dry brush blending. You kind of have no choice because acrylics dry so quickly. But uh, if I want to do a wet on wet with acrylic, you got to work pretty quickly to do wet on wet if you want to get those subtle blends and softness. Uh, but after that, um, I'd say most of the time with acrylics, I'm definitely doing a lot more dry brush blending techniques um, and then just doing a lot of layering that way. So with, with oils, just a different approach here. and. Uh, I do have the luxury of having a lot longer drying times. So I, I, that's that's what I, I think most people love about, about that. But I love acrylic too because of, of its dry time. So I think depending on what I'm trying to accomplish, um, I could have painted this little girl all in acrylic as well. But again, I would have been doing a lot more dry brush technique. And uh, I wanted to really introduce a lot of softness here. Plus acrylic tends to uh, dry, um, and once it dries, um, it, it'll tend to, to dark in several shades, um, which is pretty common. So um, that's always a, a challenge with acrylics. So there's, there's definitely pros and cons with using uh, either oils or acrylics. Okay, so again, I uh, wanted to just get this little dress worked in here. I'm really not too concerned about the fact that I'm going over her arms. Um, this is precisely why I do this because uh, I just don't want to have to work around the objects. I'd rather just work through them and then uh, when I bring the, the forward objects into play I can go right over that color and uh, mix for a I feel like just a nicer transition between the two. So like anything, I just want to work in the background and then bring it forward. Okay, so at this point in time, I'm starting to block in that arm. So going into uh, my, my dark umber color to begin with, and um, then I'll, I'll start to introduce the lighter colors uh, and then just bring them together uh, right on the canvas and I'll blend them in. So typically when uh, when painting people, um, you know, again, I don't use a, a lot of brushes. Uh, I think I probably used four brushes for this entire painting. Um, but, uh, you know, I use my, my, my zero brush, uh, round brushes, small detail brushes, uh, typically uh, in the face region, but when I move into large surface areas, such as the back and the arms, uh, I'll abandon those smaller brushes and go to my larger angular brush. Um, so I can just bring in all those colors much quicker, cover the surface much quicker, and then uh, blend them right 
right on to the canvas, which is kind of what you're seeing me do there. And I'll slowly tweak and make adjustments to the, to the highlighted portions of the face as you see me do. So bringing in all the dark first, and uh, so I'll, I'll block in the dark, then I'll block in the, the light regions, then I'll do a transition color right in the middle, um, and then bring them all together, and, uh, and then I'll soften them and uh, blend them right on the canvas. So this arm is definitely in more shadow, so uh, we're not gonna have nearly as much uh, highlight to have to worry about on this. And I'll just keep kind of coming through here and I'll just be adjusting my values slightly and building on top of it uh, little by little. So I'll go back and work on that arm a little bit more. Right now, I just wanted to let it take a little time and start to kind of dry a little bit. Um, I can I did most of the soft blending wet on wet. So after a few days of letting it dry, um, I can then um, go back and dry brush, blend some more of my color on top of that. Just working on the shadow um, now, and um, I'm kind of, you know, using in the darker shadows. It's really just umber and ultramarine blue. Um, there, it's almost a, a two-part shadow here. There's the primary shadow, and then there's kind of the secondary shadow casts as well. So the primary shadow is ultramarine blue and burnt umber. And then as I go into the secondary cast shadow, I'm um, just kind of light, lightening that color uh, a little bit more with some with some white. But I want those, I wanted to not have a lot of paint on the brush when I did that so that a lot of those uh, floorboards, uh, the wood grain would still kind of show through underneath. Okay, so now uh, working on on uh, our little leg here and um, kind of really using the same technique I did on that arm. Um, we'll just uh, wet on wet this entire section here um, and uh, we'll kind of blend those and get those transitioned in real nicely and then uh, we'll come back later on when it's dry and uh, introduce some other highlights with a, with a dry brush blending technique.
we'll get this um, foot all painted in before we introduce the uh, slipper. That way I don't have to be all too careful about trying to work around the slipper. So I just created a, a nice little champagne color here. Um, really just used uh, some of my flesh tones um, and then introduced a little bit more red into those flesh tones and it created that nice champagne color. Um, so really didn't digress from our five colors, honestly. Uh, you know, again, umber, blue, red, yellow, white. And um, that, those are the five colors that uh, really were used to create this entire painting. Um, so it was, it was a very simple palette. Um, and, uh, but I felt it was quite effective. So we'll get all that blocked in here. And um, then we can slowly introduce our highlights. So starting wet on wet, changing the value, bringing a little more umber into that little champagne mixture, get the shadows worked in. While it's still wet on the canvas, they'll blend nicely together. Then several days later, I'll go back uh, when it's dry and we'll dry brush blend other highlighted colors into that as well. I was told later on that uh, by a ballerina that saw this painting that um, my slippers were too blocky, that they weren't quite that flat on the end. So um, that would be uh, my bad. I apologize for those ballerinas that are noticing flaws uh, in the painting such as that. Um, not too familiar with with ballet but for a long time now I've been wanting to work on a ballerina and um, I just think that little little girls make such awesome subjects anyway they're they're beautiful um, they're there's an innocence about them that I love putting them in the painting kind of brings in um, an innocence into the painting I feel and so I just enjoy painting uh, children in general um, but uh, especially especially girls I've got a daughter um, she was never a ballerina she was a, a cheerleader um, but they make uh, great subjects so now several days have gone by these arms that I that I uh, wet on wet blended in are now dry or mostly surface dry anyway to the point that I can come back through here and uh, add some subtle dry brush uh, blending into those regions again and um, really just start to um, really really start to round out those colors and those transitions and those changes that I've been trying to make here So I just kind of jump around here and uh, I'm kind of getting to the point where I need to start standing back a little bit more looking at the entire painting as a whole um, and really kind of seeing how it all ties together. So uh, that's really my process that I'll take. Uh, I get my nose in the canvas early on, use the smallest brushes, get the smallest details and uh, as I start to expand upon that. It's using the larger brushes, kind of stepping back a little more um, and seeing how everything kind of ties in. So these slippers uh, are, are dry. 
Um, several more days have gone by and uh, I can now introduce even more of the highlighted colors. So the dress now is is quite dry. Um, a few weeks have gone by now, and um, uh, again, I can use uh, my, my dry brush blending technique here and try to get some more of that pure white um, kind of worked in and, and around um, a lot of these sections where I feel like more of the direct lighting is, is hitting these different uh, ruffles in the dress. So a lot of things to think about is, is uh, I was painting this painting and um, thinking how I wanted to try to tackle each thing. It's kind of now hitting that point where it's just the refining phase of the painting going back through in and around uh, each area of the painting and, and just improving, adding a little touch here, a little touch there, a little more highlight, um, using colors and it's their pure form um, to, to, bring, to bring that together. Just hitting those, those small details now. Now I can just come back and kind of deepen some shadows a little more. It really just helps to dimensionalize her. Kind of, kind of lifts her right off the floor. Um, I think that just, just little subtle, simple techniques can can do so much good. Okay, so um, again, we fast forward a little bit more here and. She's been sitting for a few weeks and um, I kind of left her alone and let her start to dry. And uh, then I can come back through and just add some of the final parts and pieces here, um, lighting, lighting up the highlights a little more, uh, bringing in shadows and other sections more, and um, and all this is just dry brush skimmed right on top of everything. So I had a really fun time painting this painting. Um, enjoyed the process quite a bit. I would work on her and then I'd put her away and I'd work on other projects and bring her back out and have a fresh set of eyes to look at. Uh, again, I, I can let a few days go by and I have a different perspective that uh, I think is very valuable. 
I think it's important to step away from paintings for days or even weeks sometimes and come back with a fresh set of eyes and, and new perspectives. And I see, I see different things when I do that. I see things that I can improve and change upon. And that's kind of what, what I'm doing here now is I've given myself a chance to get away from the painting, work on other paintings, and then um, come back. So works works for me if, you know, if that's something that works for you, uh, give that a try. So here just improving the lines now, coming back and skimming on a little bit more of the uh, the white umber. Just subtle changes, subtle improvement, sharpening certain lines, squaring up certain areas a little bit better. Changing, changing a value here slightly. So right now what I'm doing, I'm kind of at that point where I'm kind of starting to bring in glazes. So um, I've created a glaze using my liquid and um, and that's where I'm coming through now and kind of bringing in some shadow and highlight. So this is really the, the point in the painting where I've, I've let it fully dry. Well, not fully dry. These things take a long time to dry, really, but I think surface area dry anyway. And, um, and then I can come back with my glazes and uh, bring in that translucence. Um, I work on the dress. Um, I also added some into the face. I uh, wanted to bring in a little bit more uh, pink flesh tone into the cheeks. Um, and uh, so that's a pretty common area to kind of bring in a little bit of color uh, to, the, to the cheek region. But uh, yeah, adding, adding these glazes at the end uh, helped a lot to, to really soften some things. So uh, with that, um, call this painting complete and sign my name here. Uh, ask you to please subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's called Mark Harville Art. And uh, always looking to try to do new and exciting things. This is a little bit of a change uh, from what I've normally posted. Um, here in the near future, I'll be posting another portrait painting that I worked on. And um, with this painting, uh, I'm going to let it dry for several months and then add, uh, add just a, a final varnish to it. Um, that way, everything's kind of glossy. As I mentioned, I started off the painting with uh, acrylic and um, arms with the acrylic which is kind of matte dry so i want to make sure to get it all glossy thanks for tuning in